What's up guys, Jeeps here. Just wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. Hope you had a fantastic celebration last night. Uh, hope it was safe. Hope great things are to come for you and all of us in 2019. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately on the Ford Performance Pro calibration that I have on my Focus ST. Um, I put this on beginning of April this in 2018. Um, so I've had it about nine months now and it's been an amazing upgrade, but there's been a lot of questions around it that I constantly get on my videos that I just want to address in this video and also do like a nine month review. It's probably been close to 10,000 miles that I have put on this car since I got the calibration. So I've had it for a while and I have pretty good experience with it. So I'm going to continue to cover that and maybe see if it's something that you should consider doing on your Focus ST. So the first thing, uh, where do you get it? I think the best place to get it now is on CJ Pony Parts. Um, I will have a link in the description below so you can check that out. I think it, last time I checked it was about $520 there. On Ford's website it was $620 MSRP, so I think that's a pretty good deal on CJ Pony Parts. Now the second thing that I always get asked, and does this void your warranty? Here's, here's all the details you need to know about the warranty. One. You can get it installed at a Ford or Lincoln dealership, and as long as the technicians do it there, it will not void your warranty. It will reduce your powertrain warranty from 60,000 miles to 36,000 miles. The benefit is, if you have a new Focus ST that you want to put an aftermarket calibration on, or a you know, post-OEM calibration, Ford, you can do that with Ford and still be safely under warranty, but it has to be done at Ford. In the original video that I have posted on it, which will be in this card right here, people have been like, well, since you installed it on your own, you don't get to have the warranty, right? Ford and I actually had an agreement before I posted that video that, and it's in writing, they had me a bunch of things they wanted me to talk about with the calibration, and they said, since I'm making a video pr promoting it, that they would honor my warranty if anything were to happen. I'm past my warranty at this point, so that doesn't even matter now, uh, but that is why I install it. Because I was making a video, I had permission from Ford that they would honor my warranty if anything were to happen. I have a Mac, you can use it on Mac or PC, and it was very easy uh, to put through. I think it took me 17 minutes. If you watch the original video, I go through all of that stuff. Um, but so, no, it will not avoid your warranty if you take it to the dealership to do. Really, it shouldn't take them, they shouldn't charge you more than an hour of labor. Uh, if they do, I would question that. But a lot of times dealerships have a preset time for installs. So, for example, my exhaust, they charged me two hours of labor. It only took them an hour, but they have to build in time for if something to, were to go wrong, they have that time built in there and they're pre-built for it. So, I, you know, it's, it's a business, they have to make a profit, I get that. Um, but just so you're aware, they might have a two hour time frame built in for that. I, I don't know because I didn't take it to, to the dealership. The other question I get asked is, does it add any horsepower? The answer is no. It adds 90 foot-pounds of torque. I don't know why Ford didn't add any horsepower. I don't know if that would put the powertrain at risk or whatever, but it just adds a ton of torque to this car that's already a torquey car. So then the next question from there would be, what is the torque steer like? To be honest, it really, it really hasn't changed. It can catch you off guard sometimes, just like any front wheel drive car, and especially since this doesn't have a limited slip differential. I, I, you could say that you know it's jerky at times, Personally, I don't think it has changed the torques here. I expected it to be all over the place. I thought it was way too much torque, um, but that was before I owned it, then I owned it, and now I'm like, oh, that's not that bad at all. And having 360 foot-pounds around the city or wherever you're at is so nice because you get halfway on the throttle and you are flying. Uh, the torque curve on, on this thing is now like straight up. Um, I think it's from 2,400 to 4,200 RPMs. You get maximum torque. I mean, it's incredible. So no horsepower gain, you just get a ton of torque. But again, it's, it's a reliable amount of power that Ford Performance Team felt would not put the powertrain at risk. So you have to weigh that out. Now, people ask, what other tunes would you look at? Well, if I weren't to get this tune, I probably got a, would have got the Mountune MP275 package. The other thing that people ask about is why didn't I get an intercooler? And the reason for that, just lost my sandal, the reason for that is because, well, one, I just didn't want to spend the money on it, to be totally honest with you. Um, and two, I just didn't want to rip out the active grill shutters on the front of the car. 
I, I just didn't want to go through that process yet and I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. And I, I just didn't want to go through that process. The third thing is the computer feels that it, it's too hot or whatever, it will change the timing and it won't put the engine or powertrain at risk. So I just am relying on the computer to do that. It, not, I don't, or, I don't think that's the smartest thing to do. I think you should probably get an intercooler to get an upgraded intercooler to get uh, maximum performance out of this tune because then you will get peak power um, a lot more of the time. Whereas this little intercooler, um, if it's hot out, it, you know, it only lasts for one or two pulls and then it'll pull everything back. And I felt heat soak a couple times, uh, but it's not been that bad. For some reason, I'm one of those weird people that when they're looking to buy a performance car, they're always interested in what is the gas mileage. I don't know why that's important to me, but it definitely is. I think just because from a practicality standpoint, can I drive this car all over and not have to worry about making it to the next gas station? I look at a car like an STI and you get 23 miles per gallon highway maybe. And I just think that there's better ways to engineer your car. I'm sure in their next version of the car, um, you know, they, they will have better mass gas mileage. But putting a tune on the car, I didn't want to drastically reduce the miles per gallon. The nice thing about this calibration is it does not reduce the miles per gallon. Now, if you drive like a lunatic, yes, it will reduce the miles per gallon because it's putting more fuel through the system. But if you just drive normal, it will not change the 31 uh, miles per gallon on the highway, which was a huge benefit to me as well. Additionally, with the calibration, it also enhances the sound of the sound symposer. So a lot of the complaints about the Focus ST was the sound symposer. Me personally, I've said this before, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I, I think it sounds good and I don't really have an issue with it because it's just amplifying the natural engine sound and pumping that into the cabin. It's not like putting it through the speakers and changing the sound of the car or anything like that. Um, it's just amplifying the natural engine sound. So with the calibration, it reduces how intrusive the sound symposer is. There's a lot of times if you're driving this car, you know, at a somewhat uh, just slows acceleration, you can hear the sound symposer kick in. And to some people, that's annoying. So what the calibration does is it actually changes uh, when the sound symposer kicks in, but ultimately it leaves more of a natural engine sound. Um, and I really like that as well. I noticed somewhat of a difference uh, to be honest, because it never really bothered me, I don't think I was paying attention to it, uh, but that is another feature of the performance calibration. So now the final thing that I want to mention about the calibration is you're probably wondering my opinion. Should you get this calibration? How would I compare this calibration to others? I really haven't driven that many others to give you, or driven that many other calibration or tunes to give you a fair answer. What I can say is, this has really enhanced the drivability of this car. It makes it quicker. Power come on effortlessly around the city. And I was even saying in my three year review video that I think the calibration is a lot of the reason why I love this car as much as I do still after three years of owning it. So again, no, no big horsepower gains. It's all about the torque and you don't lose the efficiency of the car. I think it's, I think it's a great, uh, a great performance upgrade and just the fact that Ford Performance offers a, a aftermarket tune is incredible. There's not another manufacturer that I can think of that offers a chip tune for any of their cars. You guys will have to let me know if there is one because I don't know of them. But I think it's really cool. What I think would have been awesome is if Ford offered a performance version of the ST. Give it the limited slip differential, give it the tune, put in the suspensions, they never did that from the factory. I think that would have been something that made, made this special, maybe as a final addition, have it come with the tune, with the lowered suspension, a special set of wheels. I, I think that could have been pretty cool. And maybe that's where I need to make, take my build, is build what I think Ford should have done, is build the performance line um, of the ST, the top end ST. So maybe that's something that I will do over the next coming months. But that's my opinion. That's how I feel about owning this. Um, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. But again, if you're looking for those high-end horsepower gains, you're not gonna get that with this tune. Another thing someone asked me, I just thought of this, is can you mix this with another tune? You cannot do that. Uh, there's no way the software could handle that. Unless you're some crazy software engineer and you could learn how to mix the two languages, that would be impressive. But um, as far as I know, you, you definitely cannot do that. If there was another tune I were to recommend, it would be the Mound Tune MP275 package. Um, I guess Randy does the tuning there. I've heard from some people that have had his package that he goes for maximum horsepower gains and 
which that can be a little rough on the engine. Um, so I, you know, I don't know the, the full truth to that. I've never worked with him, um, but that's just what I've heard. So I would say if you're looking to do MP275, make sure they stick to the numbers that they show online that also keep your factory warranty. So you could get that done in California. You could also probably get it done in some Ford dealerships, uh, but I don't know how many Ford dealerships are going to be putting uh, the Mountune packages on the car and actually know how to do it. So it's tough to say, but yeah, that's, that's about all. Um, again, Happy New Year to everyone. Hope you're having a good start to your year. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. My goal in 2017 is to get to 100,000 subscribers. I'm just going to work hard to make sure I'm putting out videos, uh, refreshing the content as much as possible, and uh, bringing you guys what you like. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.